Welcome to Between the Lines with Martin C. Weiner. Today we're going to discuss a chemical called DCA. In 2007, you, uh, researchers out of the University of Alberta discovered that it had remarkable potential in animals to cure all sorts of cancers, at least put them into remission or to decrease their size. The problem with the drug, of course, is that it's not patentable. And as such, um, there's been very little attention, if any, from the drug companies. Um, researchers from the University of Alberta have since uh, solicited private uh, donations, philanthropic donations, to start a human trial. And that news was released just this week uh, with some, again, remarkable results. Uh, we have with us today Dr. Akbar Khan and Dr. Humera Khan from Medicore Cancer Centers. And they administer uh, the drug DCA in what's called off-label. Um, but they administer to cancer uh, patients here, right here in Toronto. And we're going to discuss the issues of DCA, its funding, and its use. So welcome both. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you for coming. Um, Dr. Akbar, t tell me about DCA in general. W what is it? Um, DCA is uh, it's actually a very simple chemical. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the name dichloroacetate, um, acetate is like acetic acid, which is vinegar, mm -hmm. and uh, dichloro, two chlorines, and it actually has sodium in it as well, which is sort of like salt. So right. in simple terms, it's kind of like salt and vinegar put together, a very simple molecule. Salt and vinegar, and I've been eating that all those years. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, th I think you immediately uh, get to the problem of the chemical. I mean, salt and vinegar, it doesn't sound like something that you can patent. That's right. It's not rocket science. It's, it is a very simple chemical. It's, it's been uh, around for probably about 20 or 30 years. Um, it may have had a patent at one point, I'm not sure, but uh, certainly does not have a patent now uh, because it's an old chemical. Now, I understand that uh, the same chemical has been uh, used in humans for a disease, I believe it's called lactic acidosis. Am I uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, it's, uh, it has been researched quite a bit for a disease called congenital lactic acidosis. Right. Um, there's a lot of studies uh, coming out of Florida, out of the university there. Um, so there's a lot of human experience with the drug. Um, and there's a good safety profile that's been demonstrated by their research. Um, so it has been used quite a bit for that, and it's actually approved in Ontario for that disease. Now that is a very rare disease. We see very few people, um, I've actually never seen a patient with that, um, mm -hmm. but maybe a few in Canada every year are diagnosed with that. It's, it's very uncommon. Okay. So that being said though, there, there has to be some data as to how this drug reacts with humans. Uh, yes, I mean that's uh, exactly for that, that disease, for the congenital lactic acidosis, there's a lot of research uh, in humans, um, more in children, but uh, the human data is there and it shows, uh, basically it shows the safety profile of the drug, it shows what the side effects are, so we're, we're quite aware um, of how the drug reacts in humans. Okay, so um, Dr. Humera, I, I'm just going to oh, admit the con if you don't mind, because we won't know who please. we're talking to. Um, can you tell me a bit about um, the, the original discovery in 2007? Um, well, in 2007, uh, researchers at the University of Alberta basically had taken human tissue cancers from the brain, lung, and um, uh, colon, and, they had trans in, and breast, breast, and they had transplanted into rats um, and given them dichloroacetate, and they realized that after a few weeks of treatment, the size of the tumor shrank considerably. Um, so based on that, um, there was a lot of excitement because that amount of shrinkage had, had been seen before, um, and um, it was hoped that those results in the lab, in the rats, could also be reciprocated in humans. Um, and based on that research um, and the fact that DC had been around for a while and there was human data available, um, a lot of patients came to us saying, there's this research, is there anything we can do with it? And that's when about two and a half, three years ago, we started giving it to our patients. Okay. Um, we actually have a slide of that. Uh, applications and is relatively cheap. 
But as CTV's medical specialist, Avis Favreau, explains, redeveloping the drug may not fit into the business plans of the big pharmaceutical companies. The tumor, the three dear Dr. Evangelos Mikalakis has given cancer researchers a brand new lead with an old drug, a cheap and expensive powder that costs just pennies a dose. You typically get this eureka kind of uh, feeling, and it's actually the most exciting thing a scientist can get. The drug, called DCA in short, has been used for decades in humans with some rare inherited diseases. When he added it to the water of mice and rats given human cancers, the results surprised him. And has this uh, big tumor growing in, in his back. So you can see that even after three weeks, there is a significant or 70 percent decrease in tumor size. It shrunk brain, breast and lung tumors in the animals in a matter of weeks. And the drug had no side effects, confirmed by tests of DCA in humans for other diseases. This kind of results to my mind, are as good as, as it gets. And it seems to work by reviving the energy-producing components of human cells, allowing the cells to work normally again, triggering cancer cells to commit suicide. Scientists agree that DCA now needs to be tested quickly in human cancer patients. This is the, exactly what we want, a drug that has activity, but has also minimal side effects for uh, patients. But there's a problem. DCA isn't owned by any pharmaceutical company. There's no patent on it. So on one hand, it could become a very inexpensive new treatment for cancer. On the other, drug companies won't be interested in funding studies for a drug that won't make them a profit. The latest bit of news that came out of uh, the University of Alberta seems to suggest that it takes up to three months to build up uh, a metabolically suitable amount of uh, DCA. Um, in humans, the dose is uh, limited by the side effects. Now, it is better uh, in terms of treating the cancer to use a higher dose. It does seem to be more effective. That's our experience. But um, the limitation is the side effects. So how did you go about coming up with the dosing? Um, um, okay, well, basically we started off looking at the congenital lactic acidosis research. Um, the, uh, the doses they were using in children uh, range from about 25 to 50 milligrams of the DCA per kilogram of body weight. Mm -hmm. So we looked at that and we said, okay, here's a dose where we know what the side effects are, we know what the effects are in humans, let's be conservative and start lower than that. Mm -hmm. So we started at uh, about 10 milligram per kilogram. Um, and so we started treating uh, a few patients, uh, we followed them for a month or two, and at that dose, we were seeing very little in the way of uh, response to the drug. So the cancer didn't seem to be responding that much. Mm -hmm. um, so then gradually, we increased the dose, and we were very careful monitoring patients for side effects. Uh, and then when we got up to around 20, 25 milligram per kilogram, we started seeing some results. Uh, not dramatic, but we were seeing results. And then we said, you know what, let's try higher. And some of the patients were asking us, you know, please take us higher because, mm -hmm. you know, we want... Uh, we want to try this, we don't have anything to lose. So we tried higher around 40, 50 milligram per kilogram. And at the higher doses, we definitely saw more response, but we also saw significant side effects. And just for the viewer, what, what were some of those side effects? You, you mentioned some neural tech toxicities, but I mean, what does that really mean? Like, yeah, so uh, what it really means in practical terms is um, you can get numbness in the tips of your fingers or in your toes mm -hmm. um, if you ignore that. You can start feeling uh, pins and needles. Um, it can progress, so not just the fingers, then the whole hand will be involved, or the arm, and not just the toes. It'll progress up to the foot, the leg. Um, and again, if you continue to ignore it, you, you could get paralysis. Um, other side effects that we saw were uh, sleepiness, uh, memory problems, confusion. Uh, and at the high doses, some patients had hallucinations. They were seeing things that weren't there. Um, uh, there were some behavior changes that we were seeing as well, sometimes stomach upset. Now, these side effects, you know, clearly they were significant. So once we dropped the doses down, um, then we found that we were able to control the side effects. And then there was the other thing that we, we found was because the drug, as you mentioned, tends to build up mm -hmm. in the body over time, uh, we found that after two or three weeks, that's really when patients started to get side effects, when the drug was building up. Right. So based on that, Instead of doing a continuous treatment, we decided to do an off and on treatment where we would give the drug for two or three weeks and then give the patients a break. And that allowed the drug to clear from the body and that helped to minimize side effects. Mm -hmm. um, I, I understand though that 
even in the case of very severe side effects with DCA, they're typically reversible. Is that true? Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, the the worst side effects would be uh, forgetting where you are, start seeing things, you know, hallucinations. That would be reversible in a matter of days. Um, the the nerve problem, the nerve damage, the right. so-called neuropathy, that's something that might take weeks or months to reverse, but it is also reversible. But it does reverse. It so, does reverse. Compare, if you can, um, the side effects of DCA, um, statistically speaking anyway, with the side effects of, say, some harsher or some more mainstream cancer treatments? Well, DCA is, is very, very gentle compared to the other chemos. Um, patients have had chemo, they can be pretty much bedridden a lot of times. There's a lot of nausea and vomiting, um, which is very limiting. Again, hair loss. Um, so a lot of our patients um, come to us because they don't want the harsh and chemotherapy. So I can't really compare, give you like it's five to one. Um, but compared to those side effects, these side effects are very manageable. They're very short, short lived. Um, and again, with a proper dose, a lot of them can be controlled. And the other thing which Akbar didn't mention was in terms of the side effects, especially the peripheral neuropathy, um, he did start giving more supplements, so vitamins, Bs, um, alpha lipoic acid, and that has seemed to help the patient a lot so we can increase the dose a little bit without compromising the efficacy of the drug and managing the side effects at the same time. So um, to answer your question, um, I think it, chemo is so incapacitating in a lot of patients, whereas DCA is a much gentle, gentler and more manageable way of um, treating the cancer. Mm -hmm. if, if I may add, the, the, yeah. the worst side effects that I mentioned to you, doesn't ha they don't happen in everyone. So right. the neuropathy, the nerve damage may happen in, let's say, 20 or 30 percent. Uh, again, it depends on the dose and the confusion or hallucinations really probably less than 10% of the time. Right. We, we have a slide of your uh, side effects, and basically it shows uh, that none, no side effects are uh, present in about 44% of That's people. That's correct. Yeah. So, um, and these hallucinations, et cetera, et cetera, seem to be around 2%. Uh, so, I mean, we're... Right. So, uh, so, I mean, while the side effect itself is pretty severe, it's a very low occurrence. Right. Um, I mean, that's that's based on our dosing and our... Uh, cyclic treatment and our supplements being given at the same time. Uh, we have mentioned briefly on the website is we do have two patients who have a complete remission of their cancer. Yes. Metastatic cancer which ha had very poor prognosis and uh, uh, were, the cancers were growing prior to DCA treatment and the patients took DCA for about uh, three months mm -hmm. and they have no sign of cancer and now they're two and a half years down the road and they're cancer free. And those patients we did not use excessive doses. We did not use uh, 50 milligram per kilogram dose. I believe mm -hmm. it was closer to about 25 milligram per kilogram. So we know that you can have a dramatic response even with a more modest dose, mm -hmm. but we don't know who's going to respond that way.